Okay, Bill. Good to see you. Bill Turner here at the... Is it called the Foggy Bottom, or what exactly is the, the name of the this facility? This is the West End branch of the D.C. Public Library. Mm -hmm. We are one of uh, 26 system-wide locations for the D.C. Public Library. And one of the things that you do, which is remarkable, is that you take time off to go to visit some people that happen to be in the local area, and particularly there's a place called Miriam's Kitchen, where you have spent time with some of the patrons, the guests there, and you read stories to them, or you interact with them in, in an interesting way. Uh, and, and I've been uh, privy in, in the audience, and uh, there have been some interesting stories that you brought with you. What, what sort of the theme or the connection between those stories, besides the fact that you actually like them? I uh, try to select a short story that will uh, resonate with the, uh, with, with the group of guests at, mm -hmm. uh, at Miriam's Kitchen. Um, How do you know what's going to resonate with them? Well, I, I, I select stories that are, can be read in round-robin uh, fashion mm -hmm. within uh, 20 minutes or uh, 25 minutes, and a story that, that will have uh, action to it. Um, and it typically has a, uh, a surprise ending, mm -hmm. something that will keep the attention of everyone up until the, 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 the very end. And there, there's typically an ending that, that, that grabs people. It can be a, a sudden discovery or, or, uh, or, or, or a death of one of the, mm -hmm. one of the main characters uh, that has a shock or, or, or surprise uh, value. Well, let's just give you an example. One was uh, about a bank robbery that uh, occurred. Yes, now, bullet in the brain. Bullet in the brain, but it was it was fictitious, but it, but it, it was so detailed that it seemed like it could have actually have happened. Right. And it was centering around a particular person who had a sort of an abnormal personality traits in some ways. Right. I mean, the way he reacted oh, to being. That's right. To being uh, involved or actually being in a, a, the bank when someone walked in, a couple of guys walked in to rob the bank, that, that, was right. different from most people's reaction to it. That, that, right, that's right. He was not taking the. He didn't seem to be taking the robbery seriously, mm -hmm. and he was was back acting funny. And mm -hmm. One of the robbers took it the wrong way mm -hmm. and uh, shot him dead, and it, it, it shot him in the head. Mm -hmm. Uh, hence the title, Bullet in the Brain, and the story was about the last instant of consciousness in that man's mind, mm -hmm. <laughs> just at the instant of death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's a good example because you know, I've been audience to several of your uh, readings, and there it seems to be some quirky or cerebral aspect of it that... Um, brings it into another dimension when when you're talking about one thing that's going on and then something happens and then you're all of a sudden transported into a whole different realm. Well, yes, that's that, that that's correct. And another uh, example would be the story that we read last week, Edgar Allan Poe's uh, Cask of Amontillado, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which uh, is a tale of horror and terror and, and uh, revenge and the, 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 the anonymous narrator uh, commits a crime of revenge, murder, mm -hmm. by walling th this guy up in, uh, in the catacombs. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the uh, guests at, Patri at, at Miriam's t told me that the first time he read the story, uh, because copies of, of the text are made available mm -hmm. um, for anyone who wants to read it, before we we go uh, around and read it aloud, mm -hmm. round robin fashion, and this fellow told me that the second time he read it, uh, he got it, and he made really good comments uh, and uh, brought up had, had good insights that he shared with the group in, in the discussion after the reading. But what uh, what struck me was that he, he had been challenged by it. Um, I try to pick stories that that that, that uh, the readers are going to have to bring something to. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they may be homeless or kind of disadvantaged, but 
that, that they, the minds are still there, and I, I want to pick stories that, that will challenge uh, people to, to understand and, and uh, uh, become uplifted. Well, it's interesting you point out the term homeless because that can mean a lot of different things to different people. Um, people are homeless for many different reasons, That's right? That's true. Okay, and different categories of homelessness as That's well. True. Some people live in a shelter, some people live in the street, some people are in transitional situations. Uh, they're all considered in some way to be homeless, but, but nonetheless, a lot of times they tend to react the same way that everyone else would react to, to some of these stories, right? Uh, y yes, but in, in many ways they re react uh, differently. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I happen to have uh, an academic background, and graduate degrees in English. And one time I was uh, assistant professor of English at this college or this u u university. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in this short story discussion reading circle with Miriam's, I've pretty much thrown out all the academic <laughs> uh, background mm. uh, b because uh, it's not a classroom. Mm -hmm. and it, it, it's a discussion group. It's, it's, it's different. A, it's, yeah. it's a discussion, discussion group and, it, and it, it, it is a different perspective than, 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 than students bring to uh, a text in, in a classroom. Mm -hmm. This is more, you know, it's a perspective of the street, uh, of the, uh, of, of uh, you know, the, the, the patrons, uh, the, the guests of Miriam's Kitchen. Who come from diverse backgrounds. Who come from the diverse backgrounds. And some people can probably relate, possibly, to different aspects of a story like that. Well, that's correct. Some of them have been victimized in some ways. That, that's, that, mm -hmm. that's correct, and there are mental illness issues, mm -hmm. and substance abuse uh, I I issues, and so forth. Um, it took me, uh, probably took me a year of uh, having this discussion program at, at Miriam's to realize that what really matters is not the story, but, uh, but, but the, the voices of the, of, of the participants. And, and uh, listening to people mm -hmm. and, and hearing what, what they have to say, what, what, whether it pertains exactly to the story uh, or, or not. But uh, what do you do when someone kind of strays off into another world, and then I mean, you sort of become a, a de facto counselor, well, therapist well, as well? Well, I, I, I listen mm -hmm. and, and, and I hear and, and try as best I can to bring the discussion back. Uh, around to the story. subject, yeah, yeah, to to the subject. Mm -hmm. But I does that know, sort of make you a social worker in a sense when you well, do this? Well, yes, thing? I wear my social worker's hat every mm -hmm. day at, at the library, and uh, you know when I I guess when I go to Miriam's. Um, but it's uh, but a lot of people that come to Miriam's also they come here too. They do, mm -hmm. right? And they, and they, they they know me and they. You know, they'll see me here in the library, and mm -hmm. uh, they will see me on the breakfast line, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or, or in the uh, the dining room at, at uh, Miriam's kitchen. And, and I I think that people respect that 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 they know. Well, you would know if they respected it by their response yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I think they, they they know where 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 my heart is. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do people ask you that question? Why would you want to do that? To volunteer for? You know, to serve them. I mean, what what do you get out of that? Well, I get out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm 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 giving back. I I have much to be thankful for uh, in in my own life, mm -hmm. and I uh, understand and appreciate that there are others to, that there are the have nots. Mm -hmm. If I am a have, then there, there are others who are have not, and I feel a um, I feel a, a responsibility to to, to 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 reaching out to others and, and helping, trying to help uh, bring them up uh, as well. But you realize that a lot of the folks that are considered have-nots are people who have had, and have been middle middle class. Some of them have had an excess. You're right. And um, there's different reasons why why they end end up. It's not necessarily that they've been. Um, in a pitiful condition all their lives. Oh, they could I have been, yeah. That. 
Oh, yeah. I, I, so that makes it more complicated in some ways, doesn't it? it, you're, it dealing with, you're actually dealing sometimes with middle class people. Yeah, yes, that, that's true. And I, uh, you know, I, I, I try not to stereotype mm -hmm. uh, people. I, 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 I would not say that, that, that there is such a thing as a typical uh, homeless person. Uh, probably a, a, an atypical uh, homeless uh, person. And uh, frankly, I, I, I don't always know. Who, who's homeless and, mm -hmm. and who's not? Homeless. It's not like you're wearing a badge or something that says, <laughs> "Hey, unless you no, unless you I, come out and say I, it." Yeah. I mean, because I know that there there are are, are are some homeless patrons who dress better and behave better mm -hmm. than, sure. than, than, than people with, with you know with homes. Mm -hmm. you know? That's a good point. <laughs> some people are on the verge but, but, of uh, but the thing risk at some point uh, about the, the the library we give equal service to everybody. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter, but, but everybody should be held to the same uh, standards. And so. so anyone can come in, get a library card, and all they have to have is an ID, right? Well, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we will take a uh, letter uh, f f from someone who does not have an address from a from a shelter or, mm -hmm. or, or you know, for, from an, an institution that, that can vouch for the person. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if a, a letter is on Miriam's kitchen letterhead, mm -hmm. um, then we can accept that uh, and issue a library card. Is the library sort of, a, in a sense, a charity organization? I mean, a lot of these times you, you don't get these books back. We know that. Um, you know, there's amnesty right now, so... Right, there was an amnesty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, I mean, you, you, people are given some leeway, right? I mean, that, that's just part of the, yes. the job. Yes, that, that, that's, that's true. Uh, you know, at the same time, we want to s safeguard the, uh, the public property. As much as you can. As mm -hmm. much as we can. Mm -hmm. But uh, sure, items do uh, disappear for, for you know, this or that reason. Mm -hmm. So I just try to be uh, accommodating and practical. Mm -hmm. So again, that puts you in a position of being a social social worker in, in for a lot of reasons. Well, and there's a lot that uh, I use on the job that I never learned in library school. <laughs> yeah, sure. I bet you do. You could do a lot of other things after this. What, what would you consider doing if you weren't doing this? Uh, join the Peace Corps. Mm. Wow. I'm sure they'll always be willing to take another person. <laughs> Thank you for sharing with us. And we can continue this conversation at another time. Sure. But I think this has been a real, uh, I think, a look into what it's like to be yes. here and um, then to go to Miriam's and, and to talk to people and share some of your stories and uh, interactions with them. And hopefully that's been fulfilling for you. Yes. It is, yes. I assume, yes. most of the time, yes. right? And then there are times when you kind of wonder, why am I doing this? I mean, I would just assume that there are times when you kind of... At variance? Well, in general, sometimes you may wonder. Cause, I mean, there's challenges that come with every job. Well, that, that, that's true, and there are opportunities mm -hmm. that, that come with every job. Mm -hmm. And, and as I, 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 I say it all the time that... that uh, Working at the West End Branch of D.C. Public Library is uh, every day is a challenge and an opportunity. Mm -hmm. you know, it's an op opportunity to, to 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 reach out to the community, to uh, serve people, to um, you know serve serve the common good, mm -hmm. and, and you know, hear people take take people seriously um, who, who may not. Be heard or be taken seriously uh, otherwise, hmm. and uh, I, 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 t <coughs> I, I take it all, take it, everybody to heart. Hmm. And maybe that's a flaw. But <coughs> well, you'd have to be the one to say that, right? I mean, because I, I would imagine that, like anything, it can become stressful sometimes dealing with people, you know. And oh, then, oh, sure, without about that. I mean, I'm sure you get a jolt out of it when you know things turn out right, but then there are times when you just kind of wonder, like, wow, how did that person, you know, 
end up in that situation or end up with that attitude, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you have to deal with that within yourself mm-hmm. sometimes. So can't imagine what that must be like, but congratulations <laughs> and thank you for being here because we couldn't operate a place like this without people like you. Well, thank you, Todd. I really appreciate your involvement here as well as Miriam's, and I'm sure you're probably involved in some other things as well that we don't even know about. So see you soon. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. How was that?